Good afternoon, I am Jaffine Solvorn, and welcome to the Millennium Daytime Bulletin News. Let's take a look at today's top headlines are. UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer congratulates Donald Trump on election win. Kamala Harris concedes election, vows to continue the fight. Trump's return to power fueled by Hispanic and working class voters. Biden congratulates Trump, calls for national unity. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz dismisses finance minister over budget dispute. NATO to refocus on defense spending with Trump's return. WHO allocates 899,000 MPARX vaccine doses to African nations. Trump's election adds pressure on Canada's Trudeau. Indian PM Modi condemns violence in Canada following Temple in Sudant. Irish PM set to call election amid economic concerns. UN2 Israel, replacing UNRW Relief Agency is your responsibility. Israeli military completes polio vaccination campaign in Gaza. Trump vows to bring lasting peace to Middle East, but faces major challenges. Palestinians urge to seek peace after Trump's election win. Ukrainian soldiers hopeful despite uncertainty of Trump's election. Russia threatens further nuclear escalation in Ukraine conflict. Weather, record-breaking heat hits tri-state area in November. Inter Milan defeats Arsenal in controversial champions, league victory. Fantasy Football Week 10, key player picks for QB, RB, WR, Tay, and Defence. Virok Kohli's declining intensity, minus Labashain speaks out. Afghanistan versus Bangladesh, ODI, but Bangladesh lose with Afghanistan. We'll take a short break now, stay with us, and we'll be back with more updates shortly. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for the latest developments across the world. Millennium Day News is a global news network dedicated to providing high quality coverage across a wide range of topics, including local, regional, national, and international issues. Operating 20 for 7 the network emphasizes inclusivity, offering a platform for diverse voices and covering essential subjects such as arts, culture, religion, education, and legal advice. Based in New York City, Millennium Day News connects communities worldwide through engaging programming that includes political discussions, sports news, health segments, and entertainment features. To ensure accessibility, viewers can access content via mobile apps, iOS and Android, internet smart TVs, and streaming services like Roku and Amazon Fire, as well as through IPTV and satellite networks. For more information and updates, Visit their websites dash millenniumnews com and millenniumtv com or follow them on social media and YouTube under Millennium News to Fall. As they continue to expand, viewers can look forward to a broader array of news programs that reflect the diversity of the global community. Whether you're interested in current events or cultural discussions, Millennium Day News is dedicated to keeping you informed and connected. Thank you for waiting and for staying with us here on Millennium News 24. I'm Jaffa and Solvorn, and we've got more updates coming your way. Let's continue with the latest news. 
In an official statement released Wednesday, UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer extended his congratulations to US President-elect Donald Trump following his victory in the 2020 for presidential election. Starmer praised the enduring strength of the UK-US special relationship, emphasising the shared commitment to defence, security and economic prosperity. Both leaders also discussed the ongoing situation in the Middle East with Starmer underscoring the importance of regional stability. As the UK continues to navigate global challenges, Starmer's call reflects the nation's desire to maintain strong diplomatic ties with the US under Trump's second term. On Wednesday, US Vice President Kamala Harris conceded the 2020 for presidential election to Donald Trump, but declared that her fight for justice and equality would continue. Speaking at Howard University, Harris acknowledged her defeat, but emphasised that the cause of equity, particularly for marginalised communities, was far from over. While I concede this election, I do not concede the fight that fuelled this campaign, Harris stated. Her address galvanised supporters, urging them to persist in the push for systemic change despite the electoral setback. Donald Trump's victory in 2024 has been attributed to a shift in voting patterns with the former president receiving increased support from Hispanic voters, young Americans, and working-class citizens. In key swing states, Trump was able to outpace traditional Democratic strongholds, especially among voters without a college degree. Analysts suggest that his focus on economic policies, immigration reform, and law and order rhetoric resonated strongly with these groups. As the political landscape evolves, Trump's ability to expand his coalition is seen as a game-changer for future U.S. elections. As President Joe Biden congratulated Donald Trump on his 2020 for election victory in a phone call Wednesday, reaffirming his commitment to a peaceful transition of power. Biden invited Trump to the White House to discuss the transfer of leadership and emphasize the need for national unity. We must work together to heal the divisions in our country, Biden said. While acknowledging the tense political climate, Biden's call for cooperation signals his dedication to upholding American democracy and ensuring stability during the transition period. In a dramatic political move, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz dismissed Finance Minister Christian Lindner on Wednesday following months of disagreements over the country's economic policies. The dispute centered around differing approaches to Germany's fiscal strategy with Lindner advocating for austerity measures, while Scholz pushed for greater public spending. The disagreement escalated when Lindner proposed early elections, a move Scholz rejected. This development has sparked significant debate within Germany's political circles about the future direction of the country's economic policies. With Donald Trump's return to the White House, NATO members may soon face renewed pressure to meet defense spending targets. Trump, a vocal advocate for NATO members contributing more to defence, had previously pushed for allies to meet the 2% GDP spending goal. Following his win, NATO Secretary-General Mark Rutt noted that two-thirds of NATO allies currently meet the defence spending target, with ongoing efforts to increase military budgets and production. This shift signals a potential focus on strengthening NATO's defence capabilities as the alliance navigates a new geopolitical landscape. The World Health Organization, who has allocated nearly 900,000 doses of MPOX vaccines to nine African countries, hit hardest by the recent surge of the virus. The WHO declared a global public health emergency in August after the emergence of the clade IB variant. The vaccine rollout aims to curb the spread in the most affected regions, including parts of the Democratic Republic of Congo and its neighbours. The international community hopes this effort will contain the outbreak and prevent further escalation. Donald Trump's election win is expected to complicate life for Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who now faces economic challenges amid the potential for trade disputes with the US Trump's America First agenda could lead to further tensions. As 75% of Canada's exports go to the US, analysts warn that potential tariffs and trade barriers could push Canada into recession, adding pressure on Trudeau's government as it faces a possible election next year amid a slowing economy and rising cost of living. 
Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi condemned recent violence at a Hindu temple in Brampton, Canada, amidst a growing diplomatic dispute between the two nations. The incident, which escalated tensions, follows accusations from Canada that India was involved in the targeting of dissidents on Canadian soil, an allegation India denies. Modi referred to the violence as a cowardly attempt to intimidate diplomats, urging the Canadian government to take action to ensure justice is served. Irish Prime Minister Simon Harris is expected to announce a date for the upcoming parliamentary election this Friday. The vote, anticipated for November 29th, follows the government's recent budget announcement, which included significant spending measures designed to address the country's economic challenges. While the early election is seen as an opportunity for Harris to solidify his mandate, analysts predict that economic issues, including a rising cost of living, will dominate the campaign. The United Nations has formally told Israel that it is not responsible for replacing the United Nations Relief and Works Agency UNRWA in Gaza and the West Bank. This comes after Israel announced it would cut ties with UNRWA which has provided essential services to Palestinian refugees since 1949, the UN has stressed that Israel, under its new law, must take responsibility for the continuity of services in Palestinian territories as the agency's operations face potential collapse due to the decision. The Israeli military reported on Wednesday that a second round of polio vaccinations for children in Gaza has been successfully completed, with over 1.1 million vaccinations administered. Despite the ongoing conflict, aid organizations managed to achieve 90% coverage, marking a critical step in controlling a potential polio outbreak in the region. The World Health Organization, who praised the efforts, but noted the challenges posed by limited access to certain areas due to the ongoing fighting. Trump has promised to work toward peace in the Middle East during his second term, but his return to power will face significant hurdles. With ongoing conflicts in Gaza and across the region, Trump's strong support for Israel and his calls for an expedited end to the war may create tensions with other stakeholders. His administration will also have to navigate the complex dynamics of Israeli-Palestinian relations, as well as broader regional alliances that have been reshaped over the last few years. Hezbollah's leader, Naim Qassam, stated on Wednesday that the conflict with Israel can only end through battlefield developments, not political negotiations. Qassam's comments come amid escalating violence between Hezbollah and Israeli forces, with both sides preparing for continued conflict. The Lebanese militant group has stated that it will not back down, and a resolution to the fighting is unlikely unless military conditions change significantly. In the wake of Donald Trump's 2020 for election victory, Palestinian leaders have expressed concerns about the future of the peace process. Both Hamas and the Palestinian Authority have urged the incoming U.S. president to push for peace in the region. Amid the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict, many Palestinians fear that Trump's policies will further favor Israel, while calls for a new diplomacy have been met with skepticism. Ukrainian soldiers on the front lines expressed hope for U.S. support under Donald Trump's second term, despite uncertainty about the incoming president's stance on Ukraine. The troops, entrenched in the east of Ukraine, are hopeful that Trump's administration will continue to provide military aid to counter Russian aggression, but they remain cautious given his previously more isolationist rhetoric. Russian security expert Sergei Karaganov warned on Wednesday that Russia would continue to escalate its nuclear rhetoric in the ongoing conflict with the West. Karaganov, a prominent foreign policy hawk, has long urged President Vladimir Putin to adopt a more aggressive nuclear stance. His recent comments reaffirm Russia's willingness to use nuclear threats as part of its broader strategy against NATO and the West in the ongoing Ukraine war. We'll take a short break now, stay with us, and we'll be back with more updates shortly. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for the latest developments across the world.
Millennium Day News is a global news network dedicated to providing high quality coverage across a wide range of topics, including local, regional, national, and international issues. Operating 20 for 7 the network emphasizes inclusivity, offering a platform for diverse voices and covering essential subjects such as arts, culture, religion, education, and legal advice. Based in New York City, Millennium Day News connects communities worldwide through engaging programming that includes political discussions, sports news, health segments, and entertainment features. To ensure accessibility, viewers can access content via mobile apps, iOS and Android, internet smart TVs, and streaming services like Roku and Amazon Fire, as well as through IPTV and satellite networks. For more information and updates, Visit their websites dash millenniumnews to 4.com and millennium tv to 4.com or follow them on social media and YouTube under Millennium News to 4. As they continue to expand, viewers can look forward to a broader array of news programs that reflect the diversity of the global community. Whether you're interested in current events or cultural discussions, Millennium Day News is dedicated to keeping you informed and connected. Thank you for waiting and for staying with us here on Millennium News 24. I'm Jaffine Solvorn, and we've got more updates coming your way. Let's continue with the latest news. The tri-state area is experiencing record-breaking heat as unusually high temperatures for November continue to grip New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. On Wednesday, new high temperature records were set at Central Park, LaGuardia Airport, and Newark Airport. With temperatures soaring above average, many residents are questioning the effects of climate change as the region basks in an extended autumn warmth. Inter Milan triumphed over Arsenal 1-0 in the UEFA Champions League after a controversial penalty by Haken Kalhanoglu. The spot kick, which was awarded for a handball in the box, proved to be the match-winning goal. Arsenal's frustrations were palpable, with manager Mikola Tater receiving a yellow card for dissent, and his team unable to break down into a solid defence despite 13 corners in the second half. As an FL Week 10 approaches, fantasy football managers are advised to keep an eye on some key players. Commander's W a Terry McLaurin continues to impress, especially in red zone situations. While his yards may be modest, he's becoming a go-to player for touchdowns. In other fantasy news, the QBW a stack of Jaden Daniels and McLaurin is a popular pick, but be cautious with matchups, especially against tough defenses like the Steelers, who rank second in points allowed. Australian cricketer Manus Labuschagne has weighed in on Virat Kohli's evolving performance and intensity. Labuschagne, who has been a key figure for Australia, stated that while Coley was known for his fiery lead airship and intensity during his captaincy, his current approach seems to have shifted, especially in the recent series against Australia. Labuschagne's comments add fuel to the ongoing debate about Coley's place in the Indian team as the T20 World Cup approaches. In the latest ODI between Afghanistan and Bangladesh, the Afghans put up a strong showing, with their bowlers controlling the middle overs and stifling Bangladesh's top order. Afghanistan's batting also clicked, with significant contributions from their middle order players. The match ended with Afghanistan securing a comfortable win, keeping their hopes alive in the series as both teams prepare for the next fixture. For watching our news, we truly appreciate your time. Stay tuned for more updates and have a wonderful day ahead. This is Jaffine Solvorn, signing off from Millennium News 24.